Well, good morning. How are you all today? <clears throat> it's a chilly one out here, and there's nothing better than a hot cup of coffee on a chilly morning. Sitting outside and watching the world wake up, right? <laughs> uh, hey, by the way, uh, thank you for everybody who sent prayers for Kelly. She's feeling a lot better up and around, and uh, she is having a tough time. But thank you all so much. I appreciate it. She appreciates it. She wanted me to tell all of you thank you. I want to talk today about um, illegals, crime, gangs maybe, uh, the possibility of martial law. I was going to do another one, but I, as I was going through the, uh, I saw what everybody was putting up on YouTube. I don't mean to copy people actually, but when I see certain subjects out there uh, that seem to be the subject of the day, I, I feel like I should comment on them, especially in areas where I have uh, quite a bit of experience. So that's what I'm going to do uh, today. Uh, did I say the possibility of martial law? Yes. Martial law is something that I think is being used to scare a lot of people. You know that we have a lot of problems uh, with uh, the illegal uh, alien situation, the crime they've brought, the drugs they've brought, the uh, diseases they brought, uh, and I don't necessarily blame. Uh, I put now I, I blame the criminals, but you know the vast majority of the people that come here illegally are not necessarily. They're not criminals, other than the fact that they came into a country illegally. And yes, I know that that being illegal that's a crime. Uh, but most a lot of these people are just trying to better themselves. I'm not going to excuse that. Uh, we have to deal with that. But I'm going to say that I understand. Okay, what I, where I lay the blame is on our government, on our employers who want cheap labor, and that's been going on forever. So this is this is not anything new. You go back to uh, the name that I can't say on here, or this 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 uh, video will be flagged. But Eisenhower's program of operation. Uh, you know what? Look it up. <coughs> So there, there's always, you know, when, when, when you are the land of opportunity, you're always going to have people try to get in. Uh, but you need a way to, to make sure that uh, you, you manage that. And they have to be, uh, you know, this is nothing new. You, you, you realize this. They, they have to come in and be a benefit to the country. You know, we, we cannot just absorb all of the problems of the world because then we become a problem okay? and it causes problems for those people who have built this country and who came here the right way and uh, and, and it just destroys a civilization a culture a country and that's what we've seen happening but anyway I don't necessarily blame those people but they have to be dealt with uh, when people say that uh, and they try to scare people about martial law I don't think that that's necessary and what the, the one that I was going to make today was first off stop being scared if, if you are one of those people who uh, is, is scared all the time about and that's what drives your preparedness stop being scared uh, you you have to approach things positively not negatively and you have to approach them out of, of, of strength and determination not out of fear so don't let these these people that are trying to scare you and it's not everybody I, I saw a couple of videos that were actually pretty good uh, <clears throat> but then there's others that are just trying to scare you don't let them scare you get, get off of that stuff wean yourself off of that you know it's an addiction that is bringing you down but still, a lot of people are trying to scare with the idea of martial law. I say it right off there. Martial law will will probably not be implemented anywhere to deal with this problem because it won't be necessary. What's necessary is not martial law, but law enforcement. Okay? If we enforced the laws that are on the books, there would be no need for martial law. Now... I can see where the, the past administration, the Biden administration, most Democrat administrations would want to use martial law, would want to use the, the illegal situation, the trend de Aragua and, and everybody else, as a way to, to foist 
martial law on the people, not not necessarily on those people, but on the people of the United States, the people that they don't like. Yeah. Uh, but under the Trump administration, I do not see that. By the way, may I throw in something here to the, the people who are always coming on, well, not always, the occasional person who comes on and says, Trump is not your savior of any... <laughs> hey, nitwit. None of us think that Trump is a savior. He's the best of he's he's, he's the best of, of options, and uh, he's he's done a good job in the past. And he well before. But don't forget warp speed. Hey, nitwit, settle down, man. Uh, <clears throat> so, but the Trump administration, we don't have to use anything except law enforcement. Now, <laughs> the way to start, first off. We have a whole lot of people who have already been judged and not been allowed to be in our country. Go get them. For the most part, I mean, that's what law enforcement is. I used to work in fugitive apprehension. It was one of my gigs before I left law enforcement. Guess what we did? We went down and tracked down people who hadn't shown up for court. <laughs> it's, it's a job. Uh, there's bounty hunters all over the, the country. Put a bounty on these people. Uh, they, they shouldn't have been out without, without some kind of bail anyway. I, I, I don't think they put any bail on them, but, uh, <clears throat> give it to the cops. <clears throat> when, when you, you pop up somebody who shouldn't be here, uh, stick them on a bus, stick them in a particular area of the county jail, waiting until you got enough for a bus, put on that bus and send that bus to the border. And if Mexico don't want to take them back, uh, find no more dollars to Mexico. And, and and I would include here uh, no more no more remittances coming across from you know they all go down to Walmart and send their money back to Mexico no none of that we'll, we'll <laughs> you put that in and Mexico will set up a brand new reception center to take all these people back if they think they're not getting uh, any more money from uh, Uncle Del Norte. <coughs> So you let the cops do their job. You arrest the people. You go get the people that haven't shown up for court. court. It, 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 it's not that hard. It's, it's hard for people who don't know how to do it. But like anything else, if you know how to do it, you can do it. Uh, this country is full of retired cops who would love to go out there and have a little side gig doing that. I mean, I'll I tell you that this problem would probably be solved in six months. I'm not kidding. Uh, when when you, when you pop up somebody and and you know that they are are not here legally, you send them back. There 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 is nothing to this. It's all a matter of will, and the courts have been playing the game, and uh, the Democrats have been playing the game. Of course, they they want they've wanted all these people in here, but we got to get them out. If somebody is not here legally, it's just like them not being legally in your house. They gotta go, <clears throat> and, uh, and and it's it's a matter of a, a a national will that makes a difference. And I think that we do have a national will now. So just to, just to put a cap on this, no martial law is not going to be needed. It, there's no way. There's no way it's going to be needed. We're not going to have to seal off cities. We're not going to have to seal off sections of cities. We're not going to have to. These people run across law enforcement all the time. Did you see that idiot? Who was that idiot? I think I just I just saw a news item, and I think somebody, another channel, put out a video on this. I didn't watch the video. I just saw the, the headline. <clears throat> about uh, Trend Agua being on all the major cities in Tennessee. Well, I know a lot of people in Tennessee, and I know that they don't want to put up with that junk, and it's there because they're leaders that are the problem. And I saw them talking to either some police chief or some sheriff or something down there that says, well, if they don't c commit any crimes, uh, well, that's, uh, uh, all, we're just going to keep an eye on them and make sure that they uh, don't break the law. That is the most idiotic thing I've ever heard well I I, I was going to say it's the most idiotic thing I've ever heard anybody from law enforcement say but sadly it's not but it's up there um, 
<clears throat> that's it. What do you What do you mean? Keep an eye on them. Are you are you assigning a, a cop to each one of those guys and watching them and walking them to you know the parties in the store and everything? I keep an eye on you. Make sure you don't break the law. You know, that's like it sounds like you're watching a toddler. No, if you know that they're here, you should have some kind of intelligence operation going to let you know. And if they're here illegally, go arrest them. They're illegal. And, that, and if it takes a change in the laws, then it needs a change in the laws. But this is ridiculous. I think that the, enough people are behind this now, and this is where political uh, uh, influence has to assert itself. The people need to rise up and say, hey, we're tired of this. Uh, pass the laws that are necessary to allow local law enforcement uh, to... And it used to be. I, you know, I, 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 I don't remember what it was. Uh, back in in uh, in my day, as far as as uh, <clears throat> local <clears throat> enforcement of federal laws, but but anyway, whatever it is, make the laws, change the laws, do whatever it is, and uh, you don't have to keep an eye on these guys. There he is. You know you know where he's from. You'll be able to track him back. You know where he came across. If you find out that he doesn't have the proper papers to come into our country, uh, he, he's a criminal. Go arrest him. Send his ass back. Now, uh, and, and another place to go is is all the employers, uh, all of the uh, meatpacking companies. Uh, we we had a couple in Kansas shut down several years ago because INS raided. Was it still INS? I don't know. That's what I still call them. Uh, <coughs> and all the all the meatpacking, Tyson, Purdue, all these places, they're full of illegals. Uh, all of the roofing crews, all of the landscaping crews, uh, make sure that they are working illegal. Simple as that. And if they're not, send them back. And if they got families up here, their families go with them. Simple as that. Now, one of the problems that we run into, you know, I had my roof replaced, uh, I don't know, some years ago. And uh, the, the crew that came up, it was a crew from Texas. And uh, not a one of them spoke English, and they swarmed this house, and uh, they had that thing done in two days. It did, did a fairly good job. I mean, I don't have any leaks. Uh, but you know what? These companies hire all these people, and, and it puts other people out of business. Now, here's the problem. Here's the problem is that uh, we have a lack of Americans who will do a lot of these jobs. And, you know, the, the, the idea that uh, uh, they're doing the jobs that Americans won't do, in a lot of cases, that's true. In a lot of cases, that is true. You try to get kids living in Goodland, Kansas, or any, you know, small to medium town in any state to go work in a meatpacking plant, they're not going to do it. They're simply not going to do it. We need people to do those jobs. Uh, back in the day, uh, Mr. Jones and his two sons would, would come and replace your roof, and it would take them a week, and uh, they'd do a good job. Uh, and then they're supporting a family, or three families, right? But Mr. Jones doesn't have sons anymore that want to do roofing. Okay, They just don't want to do it. And so you need people to do these jobs. That's, that's, that's simply the way that it is. But you have, these people have to be here legally. So if they're here illegally, we got to send them back to some place, and, and you got to put the hurt on them uh, on these companies that that hire them, because they're it, it's unfair business business practices. You know, if I see and I, I did see a uh, I was out putting Christmas lights on a house several years ago, and a van pulls up and about five uh, non. Uh, English speaking guys jump out of the, the van and they just swarm this house and they're putting lights up all of this house and it get done in about an hour and it took me four hours to do the house I was working on. And, and I know that, that they weren't legal and I know that they were getting paid squat. Uh, I pay my people great. Uh, my, my people, uh, you know, make anywhere from 75 to a hundred dollars an hour. And, uh, and I know these people were paying, you know, they're, if they were getting 12 bucks an hour, I would be surprised. <clears throat> and, and, and so they make it tough on people who are trying to run businesses properly. And, uh, and that's just not fair. But anyway, we do need a lot of, uh, 
we need to process them. We need to know exactly who they are. Uh, I'm not going to punish them forever for coming across our border once, twice, three, whatever, because we're the ones who've been wanting, been inviting them up here. Uh, uh, but we have to get them taken care of. We got to get the criminals out. And I'll tell you right now, it is not difficult. It is not difficult at all. We could get her done fairly quickly. It's just a matter of having the will to do it. So don't be afraid of martial law. It's not going to take martial law. It's going to take law enforcement. And that's what our country has refused to do for years. And that's why we're in this problem. Okay. All right. You all have a great day. I'm going to go out and hang Christmas lights on this beautiful day. Again, thank you for all your prayers for Kelly. She's doing a lot better. And I think I'm getting over this stuff myself, too. Uh, don't be afraid. Stop being scared. And stop letting people frighten you uh, about a nuclear war or this or that or the other thing. And apply yourself positively to your preparedness which will benefit you. It will improve your life today while ensuring a good future for you tomorrow. Okay, so you all have a good day. Remember, we prepare well today in order to live well tomorrow. And you guys have a good one. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.